Exactly. I know, right? Really. Okay, are we good? Yes, no? Is that a yes or a no? Ish. Ish? Okay, fine. We'll go with ish. Good? Good? Yeah? Excellent. Um, Holly's going to do my running for you. Um, one was, where do you, what do you think about this idea of being more ambitious than the 2050 target? The other thing was, um, I gave you a tricky one at the end, this ranking exercise, and that was just to start trying to force you guys to think about priorities and, 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 uh, and how you might separate some of these things, so you can't just say, everything's important, do everything at once. Um, so that was the challenge for me. Um, what I want to do is if I can just get each of the moderators to tell me a little bit about what your table said, in response to the exam question, and then a little bit about the the, the, the ranking um, situation. Thank you. So we had a very ambitious table, um, who 100% said that it needs to be sooner than 2050. Um, most on the table um, said, you know, less than or at least 2030 should be the target. Um, but there was a discussion about the need to be pragmatic, not be um, so unrealistic that it became a sort of, oh, what's the point, we're never going to make it type of um, target. Um, my table did not like having to prioritise. <laughs> did anyone? No? Okay, good. Um, as you can see, there was a real yeah. um, spread of um, different priorities. And the reason why the table didn't like it was because they considered it to be a holistic approach. Um, and that there were so many different ways in which you could approach these decisions um, from, you know, what's most financially impactful, you know, if you haven't got a lot of money, where, where are you best focusing your efforts, what's achievable um, in, the, in the short term, the medium term, the long term, and what is most efficient, um, you know, where can the biggest impact be made. Um, so there were lots of ways in which they were approaching that question, which made it very difficult. So, um, yeah. Fascinating. Excellent. Glenn, throw your table. Uh, yeah, in terms of hitting the target by 2050, for the most part, we all thought that, yes, we should definitely be aiming for that. But there was you know, some question about, is, is it practical? Is 2050 not a hard enough target as it is? Um, but nonetheless, we think that we should be aiming for that. But there's also questions about educating the general public about it, because we felt that we are quite an engaged group here ourselves. Uh, so and there's lots of stuff, yeah. and there's lots of stuff that, that we didn't know prior to this weekend. So how, if we're engaged, how do we get people that aren't even thinking about the stuff that's not on the radar? How do we get it on the radar? Um, like Nick's group, nobody <laughs> likes ranking anything. Um, but when it came to it, transport felt like the the priority to tackle, while surprisingly waste reduction in buildings were kind of closer to the bottom of the uh, the list. And we've been. I think we, we had in mind what's going to be easy or easier to, to achieve, and I felt that the costs that go into waste reduction, the effort that goes into waste reduction and, and sorting buildings might be a little bit more difficult than buying new buses, for example, uh, doing more of those tangible things for transport. Great. And um, Catherine has excellently come down the front to... Thank you. So um, my table were also generally in agreement that we should go quicker. Um, there was also a bit of a discussion about whether you know whether we should set dates like that or whether we should just try and go as fast as possible and that that might vary by kind of different sectors. Um, the reasons that people wanted to go faster were that um, climate change is already affecting people both here and also you know as as Asad told us yesterday um, about people in the global south uh, about the sort of co-benefits of, of taking action so you know things like health, uh, but also just a feeling that 2050 is just a bit too far away for most people to kind of be able to imagine and that it would might lead to sort of inertia or procrastination or just laziness. So, so those were our reasons for wanting to go faster. Uh, in terms of the ranking, nope, we didn't like it either. Um, so we, for several reasons, uh, obviously people just kind of found it hard to prioritize because you know everything is a very important issue, but also again, we've been hearing a lot this weekend about how these issues are linked and, and how we need to take a sort of holistic view rather than sort of look at them separately and in isolation. Um, it was also, um, we, we had some quite interesting discussions about what criteria we were using to prioritise, so should it be about what, in, what, can we, what we can influence, either what we personally can influence or what the council can influence, uh, should it be about what's doable and should we prioritise things that are easy and quick or should we give most effort to the things that are going to be the hardest because they need the most work. 
uh, and also the, in terms of what is going to have the most impact. Um, so, <laughs> seeing as everyone is using different criteria, <laughs> I, I don't know how <laughs> useful this is, but what we... Don't we, worry about it. <laughs> we, we seem to have got... Um, so, the, the highest priority is uh, probably transport, because it is, we did feel it was quite doable, we felt that there was a lot of influence it was possible to have, uh, and also it just seemed to kind of energise people, and there was a lot of interest in it, people can relate to it very easily, and people have a lot of sort of gripes about it that they, you know, that this might help to address. Uh, buildings was also quite a high priority, um, partly because um, of, you know the the big impact that it has, and also because it's quite hard to solve and, and needs effort. Um, we sort of had lower priorities for uh, for renewable energy and waste reduction, and, and biodiversity was quite mixed. You know, some people wanted to prioritise it quite a lot, and other people it was it was low. Thank you. <coughs> Short pause. One coming back some way around the room. Don't trip. Thank you. Um, I think uh, my table sort of felt that uh, targets are, are almost designed to be slipped. So while 2050, you know, might be a sort of a reasonable target, there is a sense that it, it might sort of move a bit. So I think the general feeling was that we should be aiming for 2040 uh, with the slight expectation there might be a bit of slippage. But more importantly, there was a sense there should be a lot of interim targets. So a target for 2025, 2030, 2035 and so on. With, with individual uh, requirements put in place. So for example, putting in a, a cycle uh, in the infrastructure by a particular date, uh, dealing with sort of electric buses and so on by another date. So having those uh, very uh, clear uh, interim targets building up to 2040 and so on. Uh, not surprisingly, my target objected quite strongly to having to, uh, to rank order. But I think overall the general suggestion was that transport was sort of of the highest priority. Uh, buildings were somewhere in the middle and uh, biodiversity and offsetting and there was a bit of uh, irritation that these two were put together. I think they should be very definitely separate uh, uh, ideas. So biodiversity and offsetting and waste reduction were sort of the lower priority but I think people found it generally a very difficult task to do. So uh, on the exam question, um, my group were a little bit split, actually. Um, so on the one hand, there was kind of a, a almost consensus uh, that yes, we should be trying to go for earlier than 2050. However, uh, there were a few reservations around how realistic um, it was felt to be to try and meet that target. But um, that was uh, met with um, a feeling of actually setting ambitious targets means that we can be more ambitious, but we might not necessarily get there. So, so overall, yes, but just some reservations around that. And then in terms of ranking, um, my table didn't like it, but I was quite strict with them, and I, I made them uh, <laughs> take some decisions and stick by them. Um, so uh, what we got was quite clear uh, findings, actually. So renewable energy, and this was done based on what the table felt would be most impactful. So renewable energy was number one. Uh, number two, buildings. Uh, number three, transport. Number four, waste reduction. And number five, biodiversity and offsetting. Um, but you'll see here I've written in green caveat <laughs> across the entire thing. Um, so it was felt to be very important caveat that actually uh, it's, it, it, these all feed into each other. They're holistic um, solutions and they will all have benefits and offset one another. Um, and that must be borne in mind. And last but not least. Hello. Um, so, yeah, should Oxford be more ambitious? Emphatically, yes. Um, felt really strongly that um, uh, sort of responding to um, things that people had said on the panels that perhaps 2040 was possible um, and that maybe even we should set 2030 as a target to really spur us on. Um, what was behind this? Well, there were so many grassroots and other initiatives already in place. 
um, we could do a lot more to sort of share information so that these issues really cut through. Um, we want to set an example and be a leader um, in the country, specifically beating Cambridge. <laughs> that was a bit petty, I thought, but anyway. Um, um, and uh, people were really happy to see um, the stakeholders being brought together to address this and talk about these issues. Um, and um, also about the sort of optimism that was expressed by panel members. Um, and yeah, I think it's also um, in terms of what issues were most inspiring, convincing. Um, people talked about how um, difficult it was to do um, to sort of address issues around buildings, and also um, how hard it was to engage everyone in this. Sort of thinking about how actually we have to do all of this together. So, um, and some of these other initiatives that were mentioned perhaps earlier in the week were uh, earlier in the weekend were maybe a little easier to do, and and uh, things like community sharing fridges. Um, there was a lot of excitement about a tool library. Um, in terms of ranking, yeah, we, we, we got on with the ranking. Um, <laughs> renewables, renewables came out top on the basis that they kind of underpinned anything. It would be our energy source and also transport as well as being a sort of fundamental um, sort of part of the infrastructure. Um, and then biodiversity and waste reduction a little lower and we didn't quite get to the bottom of what was behind those thoughts but looking forward to talking about that of course the next weekend we get together. Yeah. Excellent, we're very very nearly done folks and um, thank you so much for that. Uh, before we wrap up um, the leader of the council uh, Susan Brown is just going to say a couple of words to reflect on what they've got from the weekend so far. Thank you very much, Paul. It's been fascinating listening in over the course of this weekend, um, so thank you all very much. I I'm just going to say a few thank yous to start with, and then a, a very few words, and then I, I shall hand back to Paul. So first of all, I'd like to thank Paul and all his team at Ipsos Murray, because uh, you've organised this uh, for us fantastically, um, and it's been a real pleasure to watch how smoothly it's gone. So that's been really important. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the team at the City Council. Um, poor Jo's uh, been driven to having to go home ill as a result of <laughs> all the work she's put in, but uh, I know there's been a huge amount of work uh, behind the scenes with Ipsos Mori uh, and other partners to, to get to today, because as you can imagine, there's been a lot of pre uh, preparation for all the different presentations. I'd also like to thank the staff at the Side Business School because I think they've looked after us very well in, as, as well um, and we've had some fantastic food, so that was, that was all lovely. Um, and I'd like to very much thank the advisory group who've been working with us to get us to this point. Um, we've worked with a number of partners locally to, from uh, other political parties, from local democracy groups, from environmental challenge groups. Um, and uh, all together we have been debating for some months now uh, how, what to put in front of you and how, it was, how it's work, going to work. I'm sure we haven't got everything right and I'm sure you'll have plenty of useful feedback for us. Um, but uh, you know, we have tried our best to make this an informative process for you um, so that you can then give us back the best possible advice. So, Finally, in terms of my thanks, my biggest thanks to all of you for coming along and giving up this first of your two weekends, um, as well as the second one. I hope you will all come back. Um, and we really, really appreciate it because uh, this is very important to us. Um, like you, I hope, I have been really excited and interested to hear the presentations. Um, some of the information that you have had is stuff that I'm familiar with and some of it isn't. Uh, I'm sure that there's nobody in this room who hasn't learned stuff over the course of this weekend. It has been really interesting. I think it's given us some better understanding of the issues that we're all facing and some of the real difficulties that we're, that we're facing, uh, not least in our ability to tackle them. Um, and there's been lots of food for thought. So um, I had some take-home messages, and I'm sure you may have different take-home messages, but mine were, we can make a real difference. It won't be easy. We all need to do things differently, and particularly we need to do things differently in the way that we manage our travel and the way that we manage our lives and our homes. So hopefully you have also heard about some of the things that we are already doing as a city council to tackle some of these issues, um, but we know that we need to do more, which is why we've set up this weekend uh, and the following weekend, well, 
the, the weekend in a few weeks' time uh, to try and get some, some answers from you. Um, I was very interested to hear the struggles that you were all having in terms of prioritising. Um, to slightly misquote one of my political heroes, Niren Bevan, uh, politics is the language of priorities. So it, it is important that we do prioritise. Uh, and one of the things that we are asking you to help us with is how do we prioritise some of the difficult things, some of the difficult decisions that we will have to make as a city going forward. <laughs> Um, so some of it is about each of us as individuals, but a lot of it is about what we do as a city and, and how we change uh, the way the city works. So you, I'm sure, will have plenty of challenges to us, uh, particularly at the end of the next weekend. Um, and those challenges will be really important and will be about how we change our services, how we might change the policies that we make and how we change the way that we all work as individuals and the way we educate each other. My challenge to you is go and talk to your friends, your neighbours, your family about some of the things that you've been thinking about this weekend, because I think that's really important, spreading the knowledge and having some discussions about this. Um, and mostly, uh, most importantly, I really challenge you to enjoy what's left of your weekend. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Um, you've done all the thanking, so I can't really thank anyone else. Um, um, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. Um, so a couple of things just to reiterate um, what happens next. Um, a few of you asked this question. You will receive all the information, the, the videos that um, we've been recording of the speakers, the Q&A sessions, the presentations, the PowerPoints, and so on that, 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 um, that they shared. You will get all of those. They'll be accessible online. Um, you will get an email during the week reminder showing you where all this stuff is. Um, there's also, there will also be little bits about advice for taking action as an individual um, and also sources of support if you need other people to talk to about these sorts of issues. Some of these big, um, potentially, potentially quite scary um, things that we talked about, particularly yesterday morning. Um, the second weekend is when we're going to take all of that information, all of this information we've, we've, we've discussed yesterday and today, and deliberate in a lot of detail about what should be done, about recommending things, about suggesting things to the council. What should they be doing? What should we all be doing as... As, um, uh, as, as citizens of, of Oxford. Um, so, in that sense, for the next three weeks, it's over to you guys. Um, talk to family, friends, colleagues about this stuff. See what they say. Um, how important are these sorts of things to them? Pose the exam question to them, almost. Um, what do they think should be prioritised? I know we struggle with the prioritisation. Um, it was a little cheeky of me to put that in. It was just to show you how difficult some of these challenges are. Um, and do rewatch the presentations. Um, read the material. Um, familiarise yourself with, with, with what we've talked about. Um, you have those notes pages that you've been scribbling some things on during the presentations. Take those home with you, think about those, reread them, remind yourself of the different things that, 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 you, um, that you considered and, and reacted, uh, how you reacted during those, those presentations. That's it. Our team are going to give you your thank you payments. Can I just have one more round of applause for everyone? It's been a really, really good <laughs>